guys, welcome back to this week's episode. Uh, I know that I did say last week that uh, I would be doing an unboxing this week, um, but I'm actually recording this on a Monday. Uh, I, I just concluded a, a trade uh, this morning, uh, and I thought I'd, I'd maybe make a video of that. Uh, I'll split it into two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be my end of the trade, and when I get the item in hand, I'll obviously do the, the, the other side of the trade as well. But I thought before I ship out the items, um, I am going to just run through them quickly and then maybe just have a quick discussion about what what trading um, entails, what, what my approach to it is, um, and maybe some, some pitfalls and things to things to consider when you are uh, either putting something up for trade or or being on the uh, being on the trader's end. Um, I am um, okay. So I'm trading for I'm trading one item for multiple items. So I'll be trading multiple items, and there will be some cash uh, component to the trade as as well. Um, not a lot, uh, but but enough to just fill up the the difference in in value that we that we um, negotiated. Um, I'll save the the items that I'm trading for for a later uh, for a later stage uh, when I do the second part. Um, so I just wanted to discuss what I'm trading and just how I, I see these things usually running. Um, okay, first off, uh, the question usually comes in, and, and this is what's, where disagreements also <laughs> stems from. Um, when you when you disclose your trade, uh, if you do it publicly, you're going to get three responses. One of three responses, or all three, depending on how many people are present. Uh, one is obviously going to be okay. Cool. You you actually you traded. Uh, uh, you're the winner in this in this transaction. Uh, people feel that you scored. Uh, you're you're the better off party. Uh, second one is going to be oh, that's 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 an even trade. Um, you know each each uh, I think got their money's worth uh, or values worth. Uh, and then obviously the other party is going to go no. Nah. <laughs> You're either trying to do this guy in, or you know, it's it's a bit of a lopsided trade. But to the other side, um, and my answer usually is that it's is it's it's a very subjective matter. Uh, it's difficult to. It depends on what you collect. Um, that that sort of influences the value that it that you attach to an item. And um, my approach is usually uh, it differs slightly from when I try and determine the value for something that I want to sell. When I try and when I sort of try and get the value for something that are the, the fair value for what what I'm trying to sell is uh, one people would usually tell you to uh, do do some searches on listings like eBay for instance or any other place that sells uh, diecast online go to the sold tabs filter your search results uh, for price prices recently for, for items that have recently sold and then sort of get a median price for for what maybe the last five or six items have sold for. Get an average um, that way. Don't look at listings just posted for sale because people can ask whatever they want. It doesn't mean that people will actually pay that money. So get a get a feeling for what the average price is that people have paid for the item recently because obviously recency bias plays a, a, a part um, as items either uh, increase in value over time or decrease in value over time. Um, so, so that's usually your first first point. And then I usually have a look at, and and that that comes into um, having a look at listings um, for sale, is try and see what the what's the sort of average to entry level cost, the lowest cost that I'd be able to replace that item with. Say I have buy, uh, seller's remorse in that in that case within a couple of days. What would it cost me to replace that item? What's the smallest amount of money? including shipping that I can get away with um, sort of to replace that uh, and, and sort of also have a look at two or three listings to just make sure that that there is availability so th that way that you, that way you can be sure that you're not overcharging somebody and if you do find that you that you um, regret selling selling the item what's the price that you'd be able to replace it with so, so those are usually the guidelines so when I'm looking at um, trading items i do the same in that you sort of get a value from listings um ebay or, or similar um you can even use whatnot these days because they do have um uh, listing uh, uh 
components to the to the application as well. It's not all auctions. Um, sort of yes, get get a feel for the for the value at at, at what price it sold recently, but also then see what you paid for your items that you are trading because that's going to be what what did these items cost you out of you know money out of your pocket what did what did they actually cost you not what you can get for them not what you you know would like for them what did they actually cost you so that's and i sort of try and get those two um Try and consolidate those two those two numbers if I can, uh, especially if it's items that I've in, in this case it's items that I've acquired recently within the last nine months, maybe to a year to stretch. So obviously the longer, depending on the items, uh, if if it's if it's something that was sold eight years ago and it's and it's been um, it's deemed really really rare. Then obviously there's that's a different case, but but with items like these that are fairly recent, uh, some of them are actually even still on the pegs. So I mean that that you can so that's easy. That's a lot easier to determine the value because if you can get them on the pegs, so can the the person that you're trading with, uh, most likely. Okay, so um, so we're trading for one what I would deem a a, sort of a big ticket item, um, and I've put together. I sent the the my pictures of my trade pile, what it currently looked like. The person said that he was only now getting into premiums, uh, especially boulevards, um, but he also liked JDMs. Um, and I could obviously tell from the from the uh, cars that he circled in the pictures uh, that he sent back, that was his main focus. So I'm just going to run through it quickly. There are uh, eight cars in total. So just in no particular order, uh, the first item in the trade from my end is the the Spoon Civic from the recent Modern Classics uh, car culture set. So that's your first JDM. Second JDM is the EK uh, Civic from a recent Boulevard set. That's the EK9. Also sticking with the JDMs, the Datsun 620 from the uh, pop culture set, the Motul Datsun 620 pickup uh, from that same set, ever popular here in South Africa. I'm assuming it's the same everywhere else. The VW van with the Castrol livery. That's one of my favorites. Uh, another one of my favorite, uh, favorites. Uh, the Porsche 911, the 930, the yellow one, also from the from the Boulevard uh, or the more recent, not the latest, but the more recent Boulevard set. So those are the five premiums included in the um, included in the trade. Um, Value-wise, the, these weren't hard to sort of put a price on because you can you can still get these. Uh, some online retailers still have stock of them, so. Yeah, it's easy to determine the price and the value of them. Uh, those two very close together. Uh, the stuff that's this is where it gets um, a little tricky uh, because these cars have been uh, these cars are from 2015, 2014, 2017. So uh, main lines JDM um, nice releases. Uh, all on short cards, obviously, because they were main lines here. Um, but the person that I'm trading with really liked these. Maybe he wasn't a collector back uh, when um, when these were released. So that's one way of sort of you know you have to you have to look at your at your collection. What is your focus? What do you like? Um, these might not be worth that much to other collectors. Uh, people that don't like JDM stuff. People that don't collect main lines that often. They've been in my trade pile for a while now, um, and there hasn't really been much interest in them uh, at all. Uh, so the first one is the Acura NSX, the 90 Acura NSX. Uh, we've seen that a couple of times. Uh, this was the colorway in, what did I say, 2017. Uh, I don't remember what the others... I will have extras of these. Uh, usually when they make it to my trade pile, uh, they are uh, my doubles. Um, so I'll I'll have uh, I'll have other copies of these uh, in some of my tabs. Um, this one also very nice. 
the Mazda RX-7, uh, the one that we saw as a super treasure hunt not too long ago. Um, this also uh, it almost has that um, Mad Mike livery almost. Uh, don't it don't don't it didn't have the Mad Mike uh, logo back then, but very very close to that livery. Uh, Sounds the RX3 uh, that we did that we did do as a as a super feature a couple of weeks back. So that's a, that's a nice one. And then the 1990 Honda Civic EF. So this was uh, sort of in the beginning of the the JDM craze. Uh, these were the Civics, uh, the 90 Civics that were going around, and and you had them in a couple of colorways. This one very nice, um, sort of a teal or turquoise color. Uh, I also remember there being sort of a silver one, almost um, almost Zamac like. Um, uh, I think either the year before or the same year. A different colorway, but they were but they were they were released in, in quite a few colors. Um, I, I know that that I do have a few copies of them um, <laughs> somewhere. Although I'll pull them out some sometime and go through all of those uh, more interesting uh, JDM cars that were not popular when they were released, but now they can fetch quite a quite a good price. So. Yeah, that's that's one way that they pick up in value over 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 time. You never know what when the next trades are going to roll around. Okay, so that's my part of the trade. Um, I'll continue the video in in part two. Uh, so so this week we're doing part one, my my version of the trade or my my end of it, and then when I get the item, I'll just discuss. You know, how did we how how do you make up the value? You how do you come to an agreement about about value and whether or not you know do you do uh, one to one trades, one to two trades? Um, do you do uh, like this is completely mixed uh, main lines? I also offered obviously offered some of my spare uh, super chases. Those are a little harder to to gauge the pricing on because some of them were more readily available here. Some of them weren't available at all and, and some of them were imports um, so that becomes a bit different you know, different chases will fetch different prices um, so yeah when we do, do get the item I'll, I'll uh, quickly discuss you know, value how, how, how to how to how to marry the two the two together um, value value of the ones that you're offering and value for uh, determining the value for, for something that you that you want to trade for Okay, uh, so that's it for this week. Um, next week we'll probably do the unboxing first and then we'll do part two of the trade. I should have the item in hand by then. If I do get it very quickly, then obviously I'll swap the videos around uh, just to just to get the to, to get the two parts together. Okay, have a good week. I'll see you next time. Keep off. Cheers.